Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune disorder of the thyroid. An autoimmune disorder results from chronic injury or infection, which leads to the body mistaking its own cells as pathogens. Then the body instructs the immune system to destroy these cells. In the case of Hashimoto's, it is the cells of the thyroid. According to the American Thyroid Association, an estimated 20 million Americans have some form of thyroid disease. Women are five to eight times more likely than men to have thyroid problems. Caucasians, more than any other ethnic group, are more prone to develop Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Symptoms appear gradually and often are overlooked, such as fatigue, weight gain, cold intolerance, constipation, depression, brain fog, slowed heart rate, thinning hair, joint pain, and enlarged thyroid gland. The thyroid affects all major body systems. Every single cell in your body relies on thyroid hormone to do its job. Thyroid hormone, specifically T3, determines how quickly your body uses oxygen and calories from food to produce the energy that cells need to do their jobs. It is critical in regulating the speed at which individual cells function. In releasing the right amount of hormones, a normally functioning thyroid aids and supports the functions of the body. Due to its critical, critical importance, even the slightest increase or decrease in hormone levels can affect your overall wellness. In Hashimoto's thyroiditis, if the thyroid is no longer producing as much thyroid hormone, the body adapts by slowing down all of these bodily functions. This image shows how low thyroid function affects everything from slow pulse and poor hearing to delayed reflexes and shortness of breath. So what was the most important or most interesting part of my project? Definitely integration. Since Hashimoto's affects every cell and every system, there was a lot of information in research and integration which I found thought-provoking. Is it a case of mistaken identity? Yes. Molecular mimicry came up several times as a leading theory regarding the triggering of Hashimoto's. When your body is exposed to a dangerous outside invader, your immune system memorizes its structure, specifically its protein sequence, so that it can develop the perfect defense to that pathogen and recognize it in the future. It is not perfect. However, as long as the molecule structure and protein sequences are similar enough, the immune system can be fooled into attacking look-alike molecules that are actually your body's tissues, causing autoimmune disease. Unfortunately for the thyroid, common duplicates that put it at risk for rogue autoimmune attacks are gluten and casein, both of which are likely rampant in your bloodstream now, thanks to a leaky gut. But more on this in a second. In addition, viruses and bacteria have also been shown to cause molecular mimicry. First, let's talk about leaky gut. According to Dr. Kaverazarian, 20% of healthy thyroid activity depends on healthy gut bacteria. If you have poor digestive function, the body is more apt to be depleted of essential nutrients that support thyroid health. For example, zinc, selenium, vitamin A, vitamin D. The intestinal lining is a protective layer that controls pathogens and prevents autoimmune reactions. When there are overgrowths of infection, the tight junctions in our lining become loose and allow food particles to leak through the gut and enter the bloodstream. For example, as I mentioned, gluten, and technically the surface proteins on gluten called gliadin, look very similar to the structure of the thyroid cells. When gluten crosses the gut lining and enters the bloodstream, the immune system tags it for destruction. These antibodies to gluten also cause the body to attack the thyroid tissue. Dr. Fasano has done fascinating research on the gut microbiota and how the zonulin pathway regulates the intestinal barrier function. Genetic predisposition, miscommunication between innate and adaptive immunity, exposure to environmental triggers, and loss of intestinal barrier function seem to be key ingredients involved in the pathogenesis of autoimmunity. 
The barrier impairment allows bacterial products and dietary antigens to cross and enter the bloodstream. In an effort to heal the intestinal permeability, the release of zonulin needs to be down-regulated. This means avoiding exposure to gluten, food intolerances, stress, unsaturated fats, NSAIDs, alcohol, bacteria overgrowth, and intestinal parasites. This will help to restore the leaky gut. Immune cells may be called to the thyroid due to a viral or bacterial infection that either infects thyroid cells and needs to be cleared or looks similar to thyroid cells, in other words, molecular mimicry. When infection occurs, the body works hard to get rid of it. However, sometimes the proteins in these infectious cells resemble proteins in our own cells. This causes a cross-reaction in our own self-antigens and is believed to trigger the start of Hashimoto's. As long as the infection is active, the immune system will continue to attack the gland. One of the most common infection connections with Hashimoto's disease is the Epstein-Barr virus. It is actually a herpes virus that most people contract when they are young, causing mon mononucleosis, which results in swollen lymph nodes and fatigue. Normally, your body fights it off, and your immune system controls it for life, just like chickenpox, for example. However, people with Hashimoto's disease have been shown to have a genetic deficiency in the immune cells, CD8+, that control this virus. The virus then reactivates inside the thyroid gland, inducing autoimmunity via molecular mimicry. As long as the Epstein-Barr virus is active, the autoimmunity will persist. The second most common infection involved in Hashimoto's disease is the bacteria Yersinia enterocolitica. It is transferred by contaminated food and water. Normally, a healthy gut immune system will fight it off. However, in some cases, Yersinia takes hold in the gut mucosal barrier and persists without GI symptoms. Yersinia has been shown to trigger Hashimoto's disease via molecular mimicry because its surface proteins look identical to thyroid tissue to the immune system. The third common infection connection is also a gut bacterium known as Heliocobacter pylori. H. pylori is most well known as a cause of stomach ulcers, but it can also involve, be involved in Hashimoto's disease via molecular mimicry. H. pylori is an opportunistic bacteria in your stomach that can grow when your immune system becomes compromised due to stress, low stomach acid, food sensitivities, and imbalances in your gut bacteria known as dysbiosis. While these three infections are the most common, additional infection connections that may trigger Hashimoto's include hepatitis C virus, Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, cytomegalovirus, staph and strep, rickettsia, Q fever, HTLV1, herpes 1, 2, and 6, rubella, Paxaki B virus, parvovirus B19, the flu, and even HIV. Healthy thyroid function is dependent upon healthy adrenal function. Adrenal hormones are necessary for the conversion of T4 to T3 and for the uptake of hormone into peripheral tissues. Adrenal stress impairs thyroid function because it causes overproduction of cortisol, blocking the efficient conversion of T4 to T3 and peripheral cellular use of the thyroid hormones. Chronic adrenal stress affects the communication between the brain and the hormone glands and can weaken the hypothalamus and pituitary. This causes miscommunication with the thyroid gland. Thyroid binding program, protein activity increases, so thyroid hormones cannot get into the cells to do their job. The detoxification pathways for excess hormones to exit the body are also hindered, which leads to thyroid hormone resistance. Nadalink proposes that overproduction of cortisol and chronic stress may impair iodine metabolism in thyroid cells, which can induce or further develop autoimmune thyroiditis. Lastly, I just want to briefly touch on proposed ways to improve or even reverse Hashimoto's. In Isabella Wentz's book, Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, Lifestyle Interventions for Finding and Treating the Root Cause, she recommends to eliminate the triggers, restore depletions, and reestablish the gut function. The first step is to eliminate the triggers, which can run the gamut of infections, iodine, gluten, 
food intolerances, fluoride, and other toxins. It may take time to discover and figure out what these are. Removing them will help quiet your immune system and reduce damage to your thyroid. The next step is to provide optimal nutrition to restore nutrient depletions. Hashimoto's leads to poor extraction of minerals and vitamins. The lack of sufficient thyroid hormones makes nutrient extraction more difficult and less efficient. Eat a wide range of nutrient-dense food and talk with your endocrinologist and nutritionist about supplementation with B12, zinc, selenium, ferritin, thyroid hormones, and digestive enzymes. The third step is to restore gut health. Bacterial overgrowth, candida overgrowth, gut dysbiosis, and adrenal dysfunction may take a while to stabilize. Wentz recommends bone broth, glutamine, and reinoculation with probiotics and fermented foods. The following references were used in compiling this presentation. Thank you for your attention.